Today's session will be led by Susie Thomas and Tatiana Arthur. Susie is the Director of Solution Marketing for Performance and Goals, and Tatiana is a talent expert here at SAP Success Factors. Susie, the floor is yours. All right. Well, thank you so much, Jesse. Uh, can you hear me okay? Yes, we can. I'm assuming that's, yeah. <laughs> you immediately went on mute. I realize that now. Um, well, thank you so much. I'm very excited to be here today to talk about performance management and talk about how we're really redefining what that means and how companies are rethinking their approach and, and what works best for their organization. So I'll spend just a few minutes expanding on that topic. Um, I will not kill you with PowerPoint slides. Um, and then I'll hand it over to Tatiana, who will walk us through the solution demonstration. But as Jesse stated, at any point in time, feel free to put any questions in. I'll monitor that after I go through a few slides here. So while Tatiana is demonstrating, I um, can help address any questions, and then there will be time at the end as well. All right. Um, so when it comes to aligning people in a way that drives better performance, we know that having engaged employees is key. And we talk a lot about employee engagement, and, and it's not just for the sake of a warm, fuzzy feeling in your organization, which is great, but there have been multiple studies done that really show how engaged people can drive better business results, can drive, um, uh, is essential to driving better business results. Um, in fact, Harvard Business Review did a recent study to look at this um, impact of engagement on performance. So many of those respondents ranked a high level of employee engagement as an essential factor in achieving business success. Now, if we look at um, employee needs sort of in this hierarchy of needs, uh, I'm on the left-hand side here, basic um, needs for a satisfied employee include, you know, having a safe work environment, having the tools and the things that I need to do my job and to do it well, and that I'm, I feel like I'm valued and rewarded fairly, right? That's just your basic satisfied employee. Engaged employees brings that up um, another level. Um, engaged employees feel empowered in their role. They feel like they're part of an extraordinary team, like they're making a difference. To bring that up one more level to an inspired employee means that that person in your organization is really getting meaning and inspiration from your company's mission and their vision, and they're inspired by the leaders in your organization as well. Um, and, and that's really where we focus, right, on helping you engage and inspire your employees. Now, this is um, some research and study done by Bain and Company. And if you look on the lower right-hand side, based upon the, the study that they did, if you're looking at this um, uh, from a productivity level, if satisfied employees are productive at an index level of 100, then engaged employees produced at 144, so that's nearly half again as much. Now, here comes the interesting part. <laughs> Inspired employees scored 225 on that scale. So from a purely quantitative perspective, it would take, in other words, two and a quarter satisfied employees to generate the same output as one inspired employee. So as we look at redefining and rethinking performance management, that's why it's so critical. It's so critical to look at what employee expectations are, what might be successful in your organization, and how can you move forward to really redefine what that means. Well, what's preventing many organizations from being successful in engaging and inspiring employees? Um, sometimes processes don't tend to be flexible enough. Um, oftentimes they're a one-size-fits-all approach and doesn't take into account that there might be different performance cultures within one organization, and perhaps the process is difficult to adapt. Um, often an annual event, which has lots of forms, um, doesn't have a lot of automation. And when you think about that event, a lot of time is spent on evaluating past performance and not enough time spent focusing forward. So it's a very much a rear view mirror approach. And in the traditional sense of performance management, I've yet to hear somebody get very excited about doing their annual performance review, right? People don't jump up and down to do that in a traditional sense because oftentimes the conversations that they have during that annual review are not happening throughout the year, right? And then fragmented and complex tools. So oftentimes there's not that holistic approach to take a look at other talent processes and to see where that connects and to see where technology can enable that change as well. 
So what we're seeing and what we're hearing from, from many of our customers is that there is um, a shift happening, and the shift is more towards um, what we call continuous performance. So really taking an ongoing approach to coaching, um, to facilitating and supporting um, ongoing conversations between that manager and that employee, more frequent recognition and feedback, and not just between the manager and the employee, but between all employees across the organization. In fact, there's been many studies done about the fact that we all crave feedback, but it's something that's also really scary, too, because I I can speak for myself, it's not always easy to give feedback and it's not always easy to receive that feedback as well. So companies are looking at, you know, how do we create this culture within our organization that really supports that where people trust each other and feel comfortable enough to do that. So those are some of the things that our customers are looking at too. Along with agility, that is a really hot topic right now around making sure that your employees are ready and can adapt to those things, those changes to business conditions and the, the change is coming faster and faster. And from a goals perspective, it's no longer just let's set a goal at the beginning of the year and we'll check in at performance review time. I mean, I'm guilty of it years ago where I would look literally a day or two before my performance review to remind myself of what my performance goals were. That should not be how we're approaching that, right? So organizations are thinking through this and ensuring that they have checkpoints throughout the year to make sure their employees are going in, reviewing those goals, editing, updating, and even adding new goals as, as strategies change, as priorities change as well. So when we look at defining modern performance, it does include an organization that supports that agility across the organization and from an individual level as well. Um, continuous communication, um, continuously setting and measuring those goals, um, feedback we touched on as well. Enabling managers to be better coaches is a big part of it as well. I, I think, you know, oftentimes managers, that they're not promoted because they're a really good coach on their team. They're promoted because they're great at their job. So really trying to incorporate some more training and some more learning um, exercises for those managers to understand what it means to be a coach and what percentage of their job is actually coaching their employees because those are different conversations um, between manager and employee. Connecting talent processes to ensure that everything makes sense and that you're communicating that to your employees as well. So ultimately that you're optimizing performance across your organization. Now we've done a lot of research um, on our side. Um, the HCM research team, in fact, finished a research study recently and completed a white paper that is published. It's on the Performance and Goals Success Factors page. Um, so go take a look at it there. But what we did is we did some re initial research like a year and a half, two years ago with um, our customers that were moving or planning to move to continuous performance management in their process as well as the technology to support that. We circled back with those same customers to then find out, well, now that you have been um, uh, utilizing this new process and new technology, what results have you seen? So it really is um, great information if you're looking to, to make that shift within your organization, talks about some lessons learned from those customers, the results that they're seeing, and really how you can su successfully make that shift within your organization as well. So I think that was the last slide that I have. I'm going to stop talking, and I will hand it over to Tatiana, but feel free to um, ask any questions along the way. I will be monitoring that, and I will hand it over to Tatiana now. Tatiana, Thank you, you there? Baby. Yeah, okay. All right, so you can hear me. I just want to confirm that you can see my um, my screen, it should be a, a beach view, something that I'm sure we're all longing to see. Um, are you able to see my screen fine? Um, one second. Yes. You see it? Okay. Yeah, I see yep. the beach. Perfect. <laughs> Wonderful. So thank you, Susie, for providing that very critical and key background information about this modern performance management approach that has been talked about in the market for a few years now. So 
as we think about this modern performance management approach, that's what I'm going to base this solution demonstration on. And I'd like to set the stage and have us all imagine that at this point in the year, corporate priorities have been identified and articulated throughout the organization and that employees know what is expected of them by way of performance goals and development goals. That is, employees have clearly outlined the goals of which to base their performance, as well as identified areas that they'd like to develop. And this is in a perfect world, of course, because Susie mentioned how typically and historically with the, the traditional model of performance management, employees are really just looking at those goals just to prepare for that end of year conversation. But instead, in a perfect world, and the way that our technology supports is making sure that employees are first aware of those expectations by way of goal setting, and then they begin to take action toward completing those said goals throughout the year. And as Susie mentioned, historically, a gap of time exists between the identification of goals and the assessment of employee performance against those goals. Now, thanks to a modernized performance management approach, that gap is filled. And that's how we'll spend um, our time during the demonstration. So right now, we are viewing what is called the activities view within the Success Factors mobile application. And I'm currently logged in as an employee named Jeff. You can see a little circle with his photo right at the top. And Jeff is both an employee and a manager. And of course, he has goals that he needs to aim to complete. So there are three primary features and functions associated with a continuous performance management approach. Um, as you see, right at the very top, there are activities. Employees are encouraged to have the ability to create activities that they can instantly record their efforts and provide visibility into what they're working on to their managers. And as we see an example right here, a specific activity that Jeff, um, the individual I'm logged in as is working on, is reviewing and approving an annual budget. We see at the very top that that's notated as complete. And this represents um, another feature or primary feature of this tool, which is achievements. So achievements allows employees to capture um, a way that they've achieved a specific goal or activity in real time by using this view. And not only that, they're able to link that specific achievement to a goal, performance goal or development goal. So as we see here in front of us, Jeff um, acted and took action on the following. He collaborated with his team and direct report and has been able to get approval of the annual budget for fiscal year, and that budget has also been launched. And if I were Jeff's manager, what I'd be able to see is that this specific action that Jeff took is linked to that activity of reviewing and approving the annual budget, and that activity is specifically linked to a goal that was outlined for Jeff at the beginning of the year. And that goal, as we see, is clearly written to increase profitability in the region and the company overall. So this is a very quick view just from a mobile perspective of how employees are able to, in real time, update specific activities that they're working to complete a specific performance or development goal. And then by linking that action or achievement to a performance goal or development goal, that information will then appear in the annual performance review form that we're familiar with. Now, in addition to Jeff being able to see, you know, activities and achievements of what he's working on, there's also other topics that are supported within the tool. He is able to look at other topics that maybe he'd like to discuss with his manager. Um, he can look at meeting history, um, different times that he has interacted with his manager via the tool and kept her abreast of his action. Um, and additionally, Jeff is able to look at his goals by performance or development, and he's able to easily choose the specific goal plan that he wants to look at. But instead of employees typically having to remember what their goals are or go through tons of clicks or files to find 
what their expectations are, he's able to look at this quickly and easily on his mobile device. And not only that, the tool captures feedback that has been provided related to these specific activities or actions that Jeff has taken. And then, of course, the ability to look at the past achievements that Jeff has made as it relates to his performance. And the beauty of all of this is Jeff is able to access and see this via his mobile device. And he's also able to see this um, when he logs into his computer when he's at work. So I'm now switching over to the browser view for Jeff, and I'd like to just confirm very quickly that everyone can still see my screen properly. I can see your screen. It hasn't switched for me yet, but I think there's a little lag on my end. Yep, there you go. Yep, perfect. Okay, great. So now we're logged in, still as Jeff, but on the, um, the browser option or desktop version. And Say that Jeff at any given time realizes that he put incorrect information or needs to gather more feedback on the specific actions that he's taking. Well, it's as simple as him accessing his home page. And when he goes to um, ask for feedback, he's able to access um, the goal that we were looking at initially via the mobile application. So Jeff is able to look at his achievements and view it either by time or by a specific goal. And not only that, he's able to identify a specific goal that maybe he forgot to ask for feedback on because an organization that promotes not only visibility and insight into performance, but also fosters a culture of ongoing feedback, he recognizes that that's the best way that he's going to develop and improve in his role, even as a manager. So. Jeff is able to access that specific achievement that we just saw via mobile and request feedback um, from someone, a peer or colleague, on the work that he took when he achieved that specific goal. And it's as simple as him as just typing a few um, letters for the individual's name that he would like to receive feedback from. And as we see, a message is already populated that is ready to send off to the identified individual of which you'd like to receive that feedback. And the great thing is this is just a canned message that his company had configured, but at any given time, he could change the verbiage that's listed to make it a little bit more personal as he sees fit. Now, when Jeff goes ahead and sends that request, that employee, Maya, that he identified will receive a notification both via her mobile app and when she logs on via her browser. And she'll be prompted then to provide feedback for this employee, Jeff, based on the way in which that he collaborated with the team to launch the new budget for 2019. Now, like I mentioned before, Jeff is an employee and he's also a manager. So since Jeff was able to check his own activities um, quickly and easily. He can also check the activities and status of his employees on the fly in real time. So now we're looking at the view of Jeff's direct report, Jada Baker, because it's as simple as identifying a direct report from the panel on the left-hand side. And upon selecting that employee, he's presented the exact same framework of the way that he manages his performance continually. It's the same for his direct report. And the tool additionally functions as an additional communication mechanism where a manager, for example, can nudge or request updates on the status of an activity. So Jeff sees here that an activity that Jada is supposed to be working on is to be meeting with her team regarding a new program management guideline. Well, we see that there was no real updates on this since January 8th. So Jeff can quickly and easily um, just go ahead and send a little nudge to Jada and say, did this meeting take place? And if so, what was the outcome? Of course, this is something that they can speak about verbally, but it's also great when something is top of mind to just send a nudge to a colleague or a direct report to make sure that the process continues to um, roll as it should. And additionally, Jeff can set the priority of this as high. So when he sends this message through 
to his employee Jada, she's going to receive a notification that, oh, yeah, I need to update my manager on the meeting that took place. In addition to that, Jeff is able to see other topics that his direct report Jada is interested in speaking or discussing during their next one-on-one. -on -one. So, for example, we see the topic to telecommute three days a week or getting a new mobile phone. He can already assume in his own that he doesn't have budget for the new iPhone X, but maybe he could work something out for Jada to telecommute three days a week. And not only that, but at any given time, whether this is during a meeting, preemptive to a meeting, or after a one-on-one -on -one meeting with his direct report, Jada, he is able to provide feedback because this is related to that culture of continuous coaching that Susie mentioned earlier. And if managers are trained on how to give effective feedback, they're able to at any given time in real time provide their employees with feedback on their performance. This isn't something that's happening at the end of the year. This can happen at any moment, multiple times a day, week, month, however the employees see fit. Now, when it comes to achievements, the exact same process works as it did for Jeff. So Jeff is able to see that, okay, um, you know, I didn't receive an update for that one goal, but I am able to see that Jada achieved the action of conduct conducting a pro program delivery schedule evaluation report for the year's key project. And what's great about this is when Jeff goes to access Jada's performance review form, whenever that time of year comes up for his company, he's going to see this exact same achievement on that form. And we can take a look at that right now. And what we'll be able to see is how continuous performance management is tied oftentimes to other typical areas of the performance review process. So of course, we're demonstrating best practices for the performance management process at your organization. But of course, we still support the very typical and traditional elements of performance. So what Jeff is looking at right now is a team overview based on a route map of where his employees performance review forms or where their status is when it relates to the annual performance review process. If he scrolls down to his employee Jada that we just viewed her ongoing performance, at any given time, um, since the employees have already done their self-assessment, Jeff is able to, as a manager, perform his manager assessment. And before submitting this fully to human resources, he's able to make changes or see how specific achievements of an employee reflects in the performance form. So right now, we're looking at the traditional performance review form for Jada, and we see on the route map that it's now in the manager assessment step. Moreover, we see different areas of that the performance form is broken into. So if we go into goals, those performance goals we were speaking of that have been articulated to the employees at the beginning of the year, we're able to deep dive into one of these goals for Jada, for example, which is to reduce customer complaints. Not only are we able to see the rating that Jada self-rated for her performance on this specific goal, but we can also see Jeff's rating, the gap between the manager employee view, but also an achievement. So it's not only Jada when she rates herself saying, I did an outstanding job because I did what I said I was going to do. Now there's proof that has been tied in from the continuous performance management area of the solution that now makes this performance form far more robust. And for Jeff, you know, if he works for a company that has a pay by performance culture, this is the type of information that's going to make it much easier upon calibration when deciding based on a specific performance me metric and the actions that an employee has taken, they deserve a specific raise. So the point of this demonstration was to let you all see the, the best practices that exist around performance management that modernized continuous performance management approach that allows organizations to engage their employees much more effectively, manage performance over time in real time, and also help them learn, develop, and grow 
on an ongoing basis instead of following that typical 10 or plus month gap where employees feel like they know what's expected of them and have the tools needed to work to complete those goals. 